Hi there. Uh, welcome to the closing bell on the uh, 19th of April for me, uh, around midday, and I'm uh, just starting to hear some reports of uh, explosions uh, going off in uh, Iran, Iraq and Syria. Uh, so it may be on. Israel may be doing their uh, reprisal um, in the game of tit for tat. And uh, you'll know more than me. I guess the news will be out. Uh, there's nothing sort of in the uh, media right now. It's just sort of um, uh, things, rumours going around and the market is getting hammered. So I'm assuming um, something's going on. And uh, the setup in stocks has been uh, one of uh, a market rallying consistently, but heading up into pretty major um, resistance zones. So it's sort of been a, uh, allowing the market to rally, uh, but being aware of um, the resistance that's around, I guess, um, has been the story for us um, of late. And uh, if you've been uh, watching, um, you should have a, a good sense of uh, why I have these uh, black horizontal lines here uh, on this chart of the S&P 500. Um, you know, I've just basically basically been looking at that big correction from the last few years and uh, making my calculations off that. Um, you know, we've got that midpoint, the point of control uh, there, around 4,200 odd um, in the S&P 500. And, you know, we've been stuck in that range for a long time. This has been sort of years of trading. We've got the breakout at the start of the year and uh, you should know by now that I sort of look at these um, Fibonacci extensions around these key ranges and expect to see uh, reversals um, at the levels, you know, around that 25% above the range. So there's this range here and, and I'm looking 25% above it as an area where you often find resistance and also 618 uh, outside so that's 61.8% above this range so that range there is 61.8% above and that's just the area that we've just had just keeping an eye on saying look the market's rallying it's all looking great um allow the market to rally you never know what it could do um but just be aware that there is an area where I'd expect to see some sort of reversal. And uh, we are starting to see that now, aren't we? Now, last week in the US was a weekly sell pivot. So that had my ears pricked up. And we're seeing follow on selling with um, this Iraq Israel situation now, obviously causing a bit of risk off. And just interesting to note on this that uh, if we've got the monthly chart here, this is the monthly chart. So that was last month's range there. And you can see we've now busted below the low of that range. So that's bringing out a bit more selling as well. So it's sort of slip sliding away now. And uh, because it's had such a strong rally, uh, you know, this has just been a straight line. Uh, there's often not that much support on the way down once it cracks. Often the CTAs, which is the commodity trading advisors that will run on uh, often uh, momentum. Uh, they will sort of keep building up positions. And then as that rally continues, often their um, stop losses are, are sort of tracking the market. And they're pretty quick to, to reverse or, or to at least take profits, let's say, as the uh, momentum changes. Um, so with the US markets slip sliding in the overnight market, and you've got to wonder where are the big stoppies um, and, you know, this correction could get a life of its own. We could get a, a bit of a sharp sell off um, coming in the short term. Um, the way I sort of look at this right now is uh, it'd be pretty odds on uh, looking at this chart of the S&P that I, I'd expect to at least see uh, a retest of the old high from uh, 2021. Uh, 2022, um, and that's down at, what, 4,800? Only another 200 points below here. Uh, but also notice 
we're in this uptrend. Here's that 10 month exponential, and there's the 20 month simple. So it's, you know, it's in strong uptrend still. Uh, and the next real major support, uh, now that it's so sort of, you know, it's been so strong, would be that 10 month exponential moving average. So, you know, a lot of things pointing to this sort of area uh, as a first stop. And, you know, then it could um, end up finding the buying support, do a bit of work, and who knows, decide what it wants to do from there. Uh, but just in the short term, with this bad news, momentum shifting, and it's all happening in this area um, that I've been sort of saying, look, let's just keep an eye on this and be aware that it's a spot where I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, a bit of a reversal, uh, that it is sort of taking shape. And, um, you know, bigger picture, there's no reason why it can't end up um, sort of carrying on to the downside. Um, there is a few things around uh, right now just saying, you know, inflation is stickier than expected. Um, a lot of the buying over this period was, you know, rates are about to drop. Um, Fed's going to drop rates by the middle of this year, et cetera, et cetera. Inflation's going back to negligible levels. Um, growth is looking all right as well. So, um, uh, and AI uh, going to lift all boats. So it's sort of been buy, 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 which is what happens when you sort of break out above key levels as well. You know, anyone who's short um, from back here, uh, their stop losses align somewhere above here. And uh, also when you break out above a major level, uh, the bulls are in saying break out, break out. So you can often see um, an impulsive move higher initially once you get the breakout. But uh, once that runs out of steam, it can meet uh, the selling pressure and um, all of a sudden the music stops and you get the um, corrective move, sort of a, a mean reversion move. So that's sort of the phase we're in now is that uh, confidence levels are higher that yes, this area is proving to be pretty serious resistance. And we've just got to see how this plays out. Um, you know, to turn bullish, you know, I've really got no axe to grind either way on what this market does. Um, I, I can just show you sort of usual behaviors and uh, how things would look if that happened. Uh, so if we do get that retest of that major level but the buying comes in and all of a sudden it cracks back above the high that is massively bullish <laughs> so if we do just get a, a short-term weakness and the long-term uptrend remains buying comes back in shoots back above the high uh, that's when you're saying right there's nothing stopping this thing now it can really take off like a rocket so that's one uh, option. And the negative option is if this um, old range that we've been in here, sorry, I didn't mean that. Uh, if we see this old range of the past few years uh, continue, and there's the midpoint of that range, uh, this could end up just being a, you know, a big false break of that up into resistance. And if it ends up breaking back down into that range, momentum really turning down and back below the high, you're then getting targets back towards the midpoint, which would be down at uh, 4,200. So 40, a move to 4,200, that's um, it's at 5,000 at the moment. That's 800 points. Um, so you know, that you're talking about 15% sell-off. And from there, that could find major support. Then you've got the next decision. Uh, stocks could then balance up and be off to the races again. Uh, but also, you know, could keep going. Who knows? I'm just giving you the um, key zones and points where we need to watch uh, to decide, um, you know, what sort of, risk tolerance and levels you have uh, because these rallies can carry on a hell of a lot longer than you ever um, thought possible uh, you know as long as you're just 
uh, going with it when it's rallying. You know, the, these rallies like this, you can see a lot of um, moments of retesting the, the moving averages and even selling off through it, uh, but then turning back up. And here, holding above the 10-month exponential, even with a little scare, no close below it for, what, three or four years. Um, so when it does get going and you're just tracking it and allowing it to play out, it can carry on for a long time. Um, so there's, you know, we've got no monthly close yet below that 10-month exponential, still in a long-term uptrend. Um, and actually, it's it's really quite overbought in the short term. So at the moment, you're just saying, look, it's overbought, it's correcting, it's going to sell off. Um, it could slip slide pretty quick uh, back to sort of 4,800. Uh, but then you, you stop and reassess. Um, so that would be just so you're not freaking out, I guess, um, as this correction takes hold. Short-term traders may be uh, interested in looking at that. Um, so, you know, we've been saying with those bonds that we have to be a bit wary um, of them because the yields are marching higher. This is the 10-year bond yield chart uh, over the last few years, and it's still trending higher on the moving averages. Um, there's the old high around 5%. We don't really want it going back above there. We've got some safe haven buying coming in with this Iran-Iraq issue. Um, obviously, um, the fears now, if Israel has uh, responded again, uh, that it's just going to keep ratcheting higher. So we've got some buying actually coming into the bonds, um, meaning yields are actually dropping. Uh, but, you know, how bullish is that if you've got a uh, prospect of war, people buying gold and buying bonds, um, stocks will sell off. Uh, it'll still be a risk off uh, event. Um, so markets can really start to confuse you a bit when, when you get into this big risk off phase, because it, it can all reverse very quickly. If things settle down in a few weeks, uh, they do a bit of tit for tat, they start calling each other names, and then everything goes back to normal. Um, all of a sudden, things can get reversed. Uh, so gold could get hammered, um, you know, bonds sell off again, and you know, stocks could recover and, and rally. Um, so that's sort of the, the, the environment we're going into at the moment where you, things are getting clouded by this uh, geopolitical risks. But, you know, be aware if um, that situation does get out of control, boy, where, where are we heading? Um, maybe, yeah, lowering risk, getting lowering your stock exposure, increasing bond exposure, maybe, maybe that's the path um, if war really does break out. Gold is currently um, powering higher on this news up uh, to 24.13 um, and really just flying in the last few hours. Um, I've been saying to you on this chart, um, again, looking at these ranges, how they develop. Uh, this is huge rally, 19, 2019, 2020. We've got the correction, which we make the calculations off. There's your midpoint. Um, around 1880, and we've had an oscillation around that um, for the past three years. And then finally the breakout, which I've been tracking for you for a long time. And now this breakout, um, again, looking at those extensions, 25%, 618. Okay, okay, keep an eye. If there is a reversal, um, watch out, but no reversal happening. And I was saying to you above 2470, uh, which is double the length of the range. That's sort of my little, just the line in the sand for me. You've got to have some line in the sand where you're saying this market is definitely no longer mean reverting. It's now trending. Um, and I'd say it is trending, um, you know, based on the moving averages for sure. It's flying, long-term uptrend, been for a while. I've been showing you that. Um, but uh, when I'm looking at these ranges, there is just areas where it can look like it's trending but then all of a sudden the selling comes in and it ends up mean reverting uh once more uh, before then flying off and having a massive run or whatever it wants to do um so it's just uh, that 
level 24-7 is, is just absolute, yeah, there's nothing left at all um, saying that this thing could fall over anytime soon and you're really creating uh, big targets that could be much higher than uh, where we are right now. If you're thinking really big picture, uh, you know, you look going back decades and you're saying, right, here's that rally. Um, there's, you know, 13 years. So we've had a massive correction and then the recovery. And then we've just done, you know, oscillations around that high for years. And now we're breaking out for the next one. And why couldn't it be like that? That's the sort of thing uh, that I'm talking about uh, in relation to, you know, busting above that 2470 and just saying, right, this thing really is trending. However it gets there is fine, but you, you, you're just more confident that uh, you're in a pretty strong and bullish phase uh, that could last for a long time. Uh, you don't know. Um, so uh, this, again, geopolitical uh, risk, I, I think it's, you know, really you're thinking it's, Boy, it's very stretched. I mean, this is the point of looking at these levels outside the range and saying where you expect it to have some sort of correction. Uh, and if this is all geopolitical and, you know, all of a sudden things settle down, uh, you just can be prepared for that sort of a move, you know, a bit of a correction. Uh, but that does not uh, kill uh, this really quite bullish picture um, that we've got going on in gold. So it's all pretty interesting. I think a lot of gold stocks um, haven't been running that hard. I think uh, the market not really believing what's going on and that, that the levels up here can be held. Um, what will the market do if it does this over the next few weeks and it's up at 2,600? Um, a lot of those gold stocks are going to uh, look pretty cheap, aren't they? And you guess that maybe the gold stocks will start uh, putting a bit, taking a bit of money, hedging a few things. Um, who knows? Um, making sure locking in, you know, uh, good returns for themselves. But um, uh, just as it stands, you know, on, from this geopolitical risk and inflation and all that sort of thing, everything um, really supporting gold. I, I told you about. Um, uh, Regis, and uh, you're lucky that I have told you that. My clients got a hold of that one, and um, it's really starting to uh, take shape. Um, you could have got that into that one a few weeks ago at $1.95 um, when I told you about that, and now up at $2.28, and look at it uh, possibly on the edge of breaking out. This being a monthly chart, you know, saying to you up through this sort of, you know, here, 230 to 250, once it cracks through this level, um, the big picture looks pretty interesting to me uh, for something similar to what we saw in the past um, years ago. You know, big sell-off, you got a couple of years of, of creating a range and then the final breakout and you've got quite a nice... Um, rally ensuing and so long term uptrend on that one uh, again it's gotten rid of its hedge book it's now exposed um, to the gold price and you know the market hasn't loved it um, for a long time so it's sort of feeling like it, it is uh, ready to play catch up um, you know I can't recommend it here at this price I prefer to be getting into it uh, at a better level rather than chasing it through the high of a range. I think that's um, uh, really a great idea, uh, but just, you know, showing it. Um, you guys could have got on that one. Um, RSG though, they um, which I told you about, uh, it, there's something going on in Mali, a bit of an yeah, issue, I think, um, with the uh, uh, coup, the military junta, um, looking, uh, I think Barrett Gold has got uh, a mine over there and, and people getting worried that they're going to, yeah, uh, well, do whatever they do, nationalise, try to um, get a greater share of the revenue, um, change the rules, basically, you know, move the goalposts. 
Um, so, uh, yeah, a bit of uh, fear uh, coming in, which has caused the sell-off um, in RSG. But that one back, it's around the, the, the level where I said um, you could buy it a few weeks ago. And look, maybe on that sort of a risk, um, you know, it's, it's one to be wary of right now. But um, if uh, that risk proves to be sort of unfounded, um, RSG is going to look pretty great uh, above that sort of 50 cents if it can then you know, hold here. And then everyone says, oh, actually, that's not going to happen. Um, all of a sudden, that could take off. But yes, playing around in Africa, um, you've got higher levels of risk, haven't you? Um, so the RRL, though, um, looking really solid. Hopefully, uh, you did manage to get on that one um, from a few weeks ago. So let's finish up with the uh, ASX 200. And, you know, obviously, it's it's suffering um, at the moment. Uh, we've had a few months of, of a good run. But big picture, it's still, uh, you know, um, caught or, or stuck in uh, the range. It's been attempting to break away from it. And, you know, maybe it will. Uh, this is where, um, again, I sort of set up for you how things can look um, if uh, prices halt this decline soon. Um, and this is a monthly chart showing you the, the sort of crappy market we've been in for years, um, since 2021. Uh, if this decline is halted soon and turns back up and breaks out above the high um, from this month, all of a sudden stocks can look really good very quickly because they'll be in long-term uptrend, you know, finding support where you'd want it to find support and then breaking out, that would look really fabulous. But um, alternatively um, is to be aware of the fact uh, that we've got this range that it's been in. And again, if you were listening a few uh, weeks ago, I was talking about, you know, here's that range. Um, there's the midpoint of that range, which is around 7,000 in the ASX 200. And I was saying, look, uh, the levels outside the range where you've just got to be wary um, when prices are sort of um, struggling and, and reverse is that 25%. There's your 618 above. I'm sort of saying, well, here it is, you know, at that resistance zone, it can um, fail from there and have a mean reversion event. So if it's failing back below that high, that's rejected from that 25% level, uh, all of a sudden, you know, it can just have a mean reversion event. Um, that would back, be back to 7,000. You know, that's 500 points. Um, so it, it's a bit touch and go right here, um, especially with what's going on geopolitically. But it's failing back below last month's low. It's also going back inside the range of the past, um, you know, however many years. That's... Uh, what, that's going back to mid-21. So he's talking about approaching three years of being in this range. You know, we really want to break away from this range um, and prove that uh, we, we really are trending higher. And it can just go in fits and starts, can't it? So, you know, we could even see a move like that and then bang, off it goes to the upside again. Um, so it's just a case of, you know, uh, being aware that this is our market's move. We've been in a tough market for years. We've had a nice run, but, uh, you know, it's not a market that's saying um, just buy, buy, buy uh, massively, you know, inflation still sticky, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so it's just, well, one of those things we can't control it. We're just um, observers of what's going on, as I keep saying, and uh, just always wary of these um, false breaks of the high, as you can see there, um, you know, 2007, many years later, looks like it was away, then the false break, and there was the COVID crash. And it's just sort of, markets sort of move like that, really um, sucking people in, shaking them out uh, before carrying on.
You can see there, retest of the high, big sell-off. Retest of the high, big sell-off. It's all these false breaks. And it's quite amazing once you start seeing them, how the market moves in that way um, of constantly looking like it's a way, shake you out, looking like it's a way, shake you out. Uh, so that's sort of just how they move. And uh, you've got to be aware of it and uh, yeah, take evasive action if necessary and be prepared. And uh, you know, then you're looking for opportunity when um, things turn back up again. But uh, yeah, just right at the moment, all this risk around, uh, just be prepared for a bit more downside um, before we find some um, good support, which could be coming, you know, anytime. All right, well, that's uh, probably enough. Um, just uh, batting down the hatches for a bit of a bit of volatility, but uh, yeah, no need to freak out just yet. It's pretty early days. All right, cheers.